Welcome to this new tutorial presented by the essential VBA. In this tutorial, we are going to see these short cases. So we start with the case number one, where you have this short case, and then we are asking you to describe the abnormality. <clears throat> now, we need to know that what here we have diffuse micronodular opacities. Are you understanding? So here, the simple description that you can give at the level of this X-ray is diffuse micronodular opacities. Are you understanding? Now, you need to know that what <clears throat> you need to know that there is something I want to tell you before we continue to the next questions. Now, you need to know that there are what we call reticular opacities. Are you understanding? Now, reticular opacities, there are different forms of reticular opacities. The reticular opacity can be nodular or the reticular opacity can be linear. Are you understanding? Now, in cases where all, all the time that you visualize reticular opacities, it means that there's a parenchymal abnormality. Is it clear? Generally, it can be fibrosis or an inflammation of the parenchyma resulting to the opacities. Now, the reticular opacities, as I have just said, is divided into nodular opacities and um, par uh, um, linear opacities. Understanding. So, reticular opacities can be nodular or it can be linear. So, a way of describing this abnormality is that you can say that it, there, there is a diffuse diffuse because it is located in all through the lungs is it clear it is diffuse you have again bilateral on both lung diffuse means that it's all through a lung bilateral it means that it's on both lungs now you have micronodular means that they have the nodules are very small is it clear nodular means that it is round and it's very small is it clear it can now out now at reticular opacities is it clear? So that is the thing. Now the next question says what's the most probable diagnosis? Every time that you have micronodular opacities, diffuse with uh, um, bilateral micronodular opacities, you think of miliary tuberculosis. Are you understanding? You think of miliary tuberculosis. Are you understanding? Now, if you instead have macronodular opacities, which are bilateral or unilateral, it is much more for the case of um, of a metastasis. If you see a macronodular opacity, multiple bilateral diffuse macronodular opacities, it is much more cases of metastasis. But if, if you just see a single macronodular opacity located on just one lung, it is much more of a primary lung carcinoma. I understand it. And you need to know that the primary lung carcinoma is divided into three. We have small cell carcinoma, we have non-small cell carcinoma, and we have large cell carcinoma where we have different symptoms that we have to visualize later. But here your diagnosis is just miliary tuberculosis. Now, there is something I want to tell you. There is a difference between miliary tuberculosis and pulmonary tuberculosis. I understand it. Now, here this difference because you are going to you are going to use that in your examination. Now, to, uh, pulmonary tuberculosis, in pulmonary tuberculosis, the transmission or the, um, not the transmission, but the spread of the mycobacterium tuberculosis in the case of pulmonary tuberculosis is, is um, via the lymphatic system. I understand it. The spread of mycobacterium tuberculosis via, or via, via the pathophysiology of pulmonary tuberculosis is via the lymphatic system. While in the case of miliary TB, it is in the spread of the mycobacterium tuberculosis is via the bloodstream. Is it clear? So now, if I ask you the question, knowing that mycobacterium tuberculosis in pulmonary tuberculosis and in miliary TB is different, meaning that pulmonary tuberculosis the spread is via the lymphatics and the miliary TB is spread via um, the, the bloodstream. My question I'm going to ask you is, which one do you think is going to have much more severe symptoms? Is it clear? So it's very sure that the one that has much more severe symptom is miliary tuberculosis because it's spread through the blood and it can have a an extra hepatic um, um, circulation via the blood that's why in miliary tuberculosis generally patients are going to have anemia they're going to have bone marrow disorders they're going to have reticular endothelial disorders because of their transmission through the blood stream 
understanding now the next question say another power clinical diagnosis necessary to confirm your diagnosis now the thing here is since the tuberculosis here is located at the level of the lungs you are going to ask what what you are going to ask for sputum culture and sensitivity that's one you first start with sputum acid vas acid fast bacilli is it clear at the beginning you start with the sputum um, acid collection and acid fast bacilli the second thing you ask for sputum culture and sensitivity and the third thing generally if you don't want to wait for a long time of six weeks that's three weeks for the culture and three weeks of sensitivity you instead do for the gene expert is it clear and other tests we have we have mantle test we have um, which has a particular criteria as i'm going to explain into comments and we have other ones like esr which can be showing that there's a chronic inflammation or that now what are the three differential diagnoses every time that somebody has miliary tb the first question is every time every time they're asking you for differential diagnosis the first thing you should put in mind is what were the symptoms is it clear so every time they're asking you for differential diagnosis it is the question you have to ask yourself is what were the symptoms it is not what were the paraclinical investigation no when they ask for differential diagnosis the differential diagnosis is based on the clinical symptom of the patient and not what is seen on the investigation is it clear so every time you're seeing what are the differential diagnosis of the patient you go back to the issue of presenting complaint the physical examination is it clear to have your differential diagnosis so in this case you have a patient that has miliary tb so you have to think of the symptoms that presented the patient presented with generally miliary tb is going to present with one cough Two is going to present with fever, is going to present with cough, is going to present with fever. Is it clear? Now, when you have an even um, B symptoms like weight loss, night's weight, and all that. So, when you have patients with this, you think of your first differential diagnosis. Every time you have a patient that has cough, fever, you think of one lymphoma. You can think of lymphoma as one differential diagnosis. Second differential diagnosis is HIV. Is it clear? Generally, patients that have HIV are going to have this symptom. Third differential diagnosis, you have lung cancer. Is it clear? So those, that's how you reason. Is it clear? So that's how you reason for your differential diagnosis. Every time you have a patient that has a chronic cough plus fever, you think of three things. The first thing is tuberculosis. The second, uh, miliary tuberculosis or tuberculosis, just simply. Second thing you think of is lymphoma. The third thing you think of is HIV. Is it clear? And now other thing you can think of if the patient is old, you think of lung cancer and if he was having risk factors of smoking. Okay. <clears throat> Or even secondary lung metastasis, provided they are, they are lymph, they are uh, macronodular opacities. So let's go now to the next question. 